I'm just gonna kind of blitz through a lot of the beginning, so bear with me. There was the pre-show, which nobody cared about, let's get serious. You had the Golden Truth, beat Brizongo, called it, nobody cared. Um, Lucha's won, nobody cared. Um, then we actually start the show, and the New Day retained, and personally, I'm watching this match kind of going, hmm. And I guess that was kind of the theme of the night, because overall, I mean, I'm not exactly happy about this show. Now, they kept mentioning how it was no disqualification, anybody could be in it at any time, yet Xavier sat outside the ring. Whatever, New Day wins, pinned the Vaude Villains, which I also called that. There was a pretty good promo backstage featuring Kevin Owens, Chris Jericho, and Alberto Del Rio. Yeah, I'm sitting there thinking, yeah, Kevin Owens is going to win Money in the Bank, like I called. Then we had a really boring Dolph Ziggler, Baron Corbin match. Um, I want to say Baron Corbin won, but it's very forgettable. Like, it's almost like a match that didn't even happen. Like, we've seen this match like four or five times now. I don't think anybody cared after the first match, to be honest. They drug this feud out way too long, kind of leaving a bad taste in everybody's mouth. The crowd could care less. I don't know if they were chanting Baron Corbin or boring. And I don't say that as a joke. I mean, seriously, there was a point in the match where they were chanting something and I wasn't sure and I could have sworn they were chanting boring. This is a Dolph Ziggler match. Dolph Ziggler used to be one of the fan favorites. What happened? Then there was the Charlotte and Dana Brooks versus uh, Natty and Becky match. And Charlotte won. She pinned. Not... She didn't make Natty submit, but she pinned her, which I called. The weird thing was Natty turned heel. Um, when was the last time Natalia was heel? I mean, I, I guess this could be good. You have uh, Charlotte, your women's champion. She's been champion all year so far. You have uh, Becky Lynch, who she fought at the Royal Rumble. She fought her again at WrestleMania. She fought Natalia at, was it Fastlane or Road? I think it was Roadblock. So, then she fought her again at Payback, Extreme Rolls, and Money in the Bank. She's fought these women like six times. So I don't care. This is the new women's division. Then there was a really boring Dean Ambrose promo, where it was all serious. The Kevin Owens promo was fun. It was something you'd actually want to go back and watch. And the Dean Ambrose one was, um, Dean being serious. Uh, Apollo Crews stole a victory. He, I, I can't remember how this match ended. I want to say it was with a roll-up, too. I think that's why I wrote steals. Um, I, I was, what, while I was watching this match, I kept thinking, wow, Apollo Crews is really impressive. That's the only takeaway from this match. Um, AJ Styles won, which was the first wrong prediction of the night. I was sure Cena was going to win this, but, um, real quick thought for this match, um, how many times can you attempt your finisher in a match before the WWE says, don't do it anymore? Cena went for, like, five AAs. He hit two. Like, Cena, at this point, try a different move. And this kind of really upset me. Really upset it. Really upset me. Because th this was the match that I was pretty sure was going to be, you know, the show stealer. And looking back now, like, none of the match stuck out that much. Don't really care. The only thing that mattered in this match was, um, was the club coming out. Is that AJ Styles? Is AJ Styles the club? Because, like, frankly, for one... Like, I like AJ Styles. I'm getting behind it. But it's every freaking pay-per-view. Why can't you just let him win a match clean? Regardless, um, after that match was over, because it was my birthday, we had cake. So, I grabbed the controller, because I'm, I'm viewing it on the PS4. I grabbed the controller to fast-forward past the Shaq commercials, which... Why are we having commercials on a network? And I skipped ahead and saw Dean Ambrose won the Money in the Bank match. 
And I know to a lot of people that would have been like, oh, pleasant surprise. But to me, that was... Okay, Dean Ambrose wins. We're gonna have Dean holding the briefcase for months. Okay, so when the match actually happened, now instead of there being a surprise in, you know, who's gonna win, the entire match, I was watching it going... So now at this point, just about every match before this has disappointed me in some way. The pay-per-view is really dragging, and this is supposed to be the match of the night. It is the match the show is named after. And I'm watching it going, how much longer until this is over? How much longer until we actually see a really nice spot? And um, kind of find it funny that everybody kept going on and on about how this was going to be a great Money in the Bank match. Probably one of the best ever. And frankly, I mean, I couldn't really be more disappointed. Aside from the last, like, five minutes-ish, the match just really drug. And maybe it's just me. You know, I, I don't really care for any of these guys, aside from Kevin Owens. So maybe my, my problem with this match is that, you know, I don't really care for the people. I knew who was going to win. I knew I wasn't going to be happy with that. But... It drug, and it felt like the moment the match started getting good, because, you know, everybody's lying outside the ring, and all I'm thinking about is, you know, why is Dean Ambrose down for so long? Why is Dean Ambrose not selling? So, I I'm, I'm, I'm guess I'm nitpicking, okay? The match wasn't bad. Just wasn't as good as people were thinking it was going to be. Very disappointed, and that seems to be a theme, because every match on the card disappointed me. But regardless, um, Rusev retained. This was a really dull match. Didn't expect that much out of it, but it was really dull. And the crowd was dead. Which, you know, I'm, I'm sure it was because, you know, Dean Ambrose just won the briefcase. For some reason, a lot of the fans, you know, really lost their mind for that. Which is okay. You know, you can like who you want to like. But then we get to the main event. A really nice video package. You know, this is Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns. This is, you know, the match. This will be, like, the feud for this generation. You know, um, for the Ruthless Aggressionary, the feud was pretty much, you know, Triple H, Shawn Michaels. And I'm sure I'm going to get flack for that, but they feuded on and off for two freaking years, guys. In the Attitude Era, you know, Stone Cold, it was The Rock. Maybe if you want to count all of 97 as the Attitude Era, like, I guess you couldn't. So maybe for the PG, the, I don't know what that era was called, I can't remember. Maybe you could say Stone Cold Bret Hart. Maybe you could say Sean Bret. But it, it's going to be the Shield guys. That's going to be the feud of this era. But regardless, by this point... <laughs> By this point, I'm just drained. I'm like, wow, this has been a chore. The entirety of the show has been a chore. Because again, every match has disappointed me. This was the match, and I think that was the problem. Because as I'm watching it, like the entire show, I'm going, well, the main event will save it. And I don't know why I kept thinking the main event was going to be so good. Because I like both of the guys. But it's just a match. So there were a lot of really cool spots. You know, Reigns kind of getting real heavy on that spear and the Superman punch. But he always has been. Um, really nice spot where Reigns going for a spear. And Rollins counters it into a pedigree. Like, he literally, like, jumps. And Reigns' head is, like, right between his legs. And bam, right in the pedigree. Really nice spot. This was a good match. <laughs> Surprisingly, again... Match of the night features Roman Reigns. But the thing that really irritated me, well, there was two things that irritated me. One was Seth Rollins winning. And I know everybody's going to be going, why would that irritate you? Well, you just gave Reigns the belt two and a half months ago. 
So let, let's seriously, let, let's look at this, okay? So let's start from SummerSlam, what was it, 2014, when Brock Lesnar beat Cena. Dominant, clean, it was amazing, right? Everybody loved that match. Lesnar goes on a reign of, what, seven, eight months? Loses it to Seth Rollins. This is good, this is good. Title means something. Rollins holds the belt until he gets injured. So you know you have a decent storyline coming back for him. Okay, now they they announced that it happened at a house show. There, there was no blame assigned. Kind of fumbling it, but it, it's salvageable. So you have a tournament, Survivor Series, Reigns wins it. Okay, Sheamus cashes in. Okay, so that's one Roman Reigns title reign. Like two minutes. Okay. So then you have Sheamus hold the belt for a month. Okay. So now we've had two title changes, three separate champions, even though two of the reigns are the same person. There we go, three reigns. We've had three reigns. Two of them are Roman reigns in the course of one month. Okay. So then you have Reigns put the belt on the line at the Royal Rumble in the Rumble match. So his reign lasted a month. Okay, Triple H holds the belt for two months. Roman Reigns holds the belt for two months. Seth Rollins holds the belt for two minutes. And, and I think the worst part, the thing that irritated me the most, was when Dean Ambrose cashed in. Because I'm kind of sitting there going, no, you really can't do this here. There'd be no point. So you're giving Seth Rollins a short title reign. You've pretty much cut the legs completely out of reigns because now he's at three runs with a belt and they're combined three months. He's averaging one month with this belt. One month! To put this into perspective, freaking The Miz held the belt longer than this. This is crap that when it happened to Dolph Ziggler, okay, fans around the world complained saying he was getting buried. When it happened to Christian, nobody will forgive Randy Orton for it. It is happening to Roman Reigns. He is supposed to have the one title reign that actually stands out. Like, okay, Cena has that reign. The one when he beat JBL WrestleMania, and he held it all the way to New Year's Resolution. Only lost it because of a cash-in. See my point? Cena actually meant something during that title reign. So... To put this into perspective, okay, Cena held about longer in his first reign than, let, let, let's see, since Survivor Series we've seen Reigns, Sheamus, Reigns, Triple H, Reigns, Seth Rollins, we've seen six champions in seven months. This pay-per-view sucked. I don't know if this was just one of those days where where I wasn't digging wrestling. Maybe it was. But the entire show dragged. I didn't feel like watching it. So I'm, I'm going to be harsh, but it kind of warrants it. Because it almost seems like they don't know what they're doing themselves. Now, I think I'm just going to cut the rant short because I'm running out of time. So, expect a video later on this week about Dean Ambrose as your world champion. But if you've enjoyed the video, like, comment, share, subscribe. I will give this pay-per-view a 62%. Um, yeah, lowest rating so far. I also will say that if you have any objections, feel free to comment them. I'll respond. Maybe you'll change my opinion on this pay-per-view. But, um, yeah, there's nothing worth rewatching. Nothing. Peace out, I'm Skeletz.